Hi guys, we're going to go and um, pop this uh, this cup into place, get it seated into uh, into its bore. Um, the other cup I've currently got sitting in my fridge, I've had it in there overnight. Um, I've got around about a point oh two, maybe a slightly less interference fit for that cup into uh, into that bore. So in the fridge, I know that uh, I can shrink that down by about point oh three. Not a huge amount, but uh, it will go down. Uh, what I've also made up is a is a jig that locates on the ID of the cup, and uh, it's slightly below the ID. So we can sit that into place, and then we can hopefully just done it its own weight with that uh, with that other ring shrunk. It'll just fall into place. So I'm going to go and grab that other ring now out of the fridge, and we'll put that in. And we'll see how things go. I'll just give that a bit of a blow out. All right, just using fingertips. That is now seated, so that's gone in very, very well. As you saw, it took a little bit of force to get it in and a little bit of a friction drive to get it down, but once that, that comes back to temperature, that'll be a, a nice snug fit inside there. Um, getting these in to gearbox housings or, 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 or housings on equipment, particularly larger ones out in a field, um, Something I used to do with uh, with the crews is um, we would uh, line a bucket with some fibre fracks back in the old days, or the uh, the, the super wools, which are non soluble. Um, we we line a bucket with uh, with insulation material and line up four or five uh, CO2 fire extinguishers behind and blast in. And uh, gosh, that uh, that really shrunk the rings down and made things so much easier to get into place. And uh, at a big facility with uh, an ER department there were there were literally hundreds of CO2 bottles that they had uh, on standby plus the plus the big ones you'd wheel in on the trolleys but yeah we'd line up a, a heap of them and uh, give them a blast and uh, shrink them into place it was often a lot easier to do that on, on gear um, if you could do an institute sometimes you might have had days of work to get gear pulled out that may have been above it it was much easier to try and do uh, do that sort of stuff in situ uh, a lot quicker so set two bottles and uh, a line bucket and uh, away you go but anyway that's uh, that's all in place now so uh, we'll go ahead and I'll make up that, uh, that dummy bush for the other end and uh, we can start getting that worm in place and we'll just see how things are fitting up all right so just making up this dummy bush at the moment so machine the OD just shy of 42 millimeters to fit in the board. I don't want to make that a tight fit because I don't want the thing jamming up inside. Um, just got an iron mill drill in here. One of my turn down shanks, we're just going to drill that out. Then we'll bore it to size for the uh, for the 20 mil shaft. before we do our boring to uh, the size otherwise we're going to uh, shrink it down on the shaft so uh, we'll let that cool off for a, for a few minutes before we bore it out um, I did mention before using CO2 to uh, to shrink um, bearing cups down to get them into bores using CO2 from fire extinguishers so obviously if you're in a confined space you do that well away from your confined space um, CO2 in confined spaces and people don't mix too well <laughs> tends to uh, kill you. Um, another thing we used CO2 for um, out of um, fire extinguishers was when we were putting big couplings onto shafts and you were heating that coupling up with, with heat beads and you're putting it onto uh, a big stub shaft at the end of a gearbox or whatever the gear happened to be and nine times out of ten you had a uh, an outer seal 
that was made out of rubber. And uh, what would tend to happen if you weren't careful is that when you got that coupling in place with the heat, that would then um, transfer into the stub shaft and then um, up the shaft onto the uh, onto the rubber seal and um, sometimes would burn them out. So uh, just as a precaution, we used to uh, wrap rags around, wet the rags, um, just tie them loosely in place with a, with a couple of stacked up Jubilee clips. And then um, once again with the CO2, give it a blast to, uh, to chill that out just before you put the, uh, put the coupling into place. And then when the coupling was in, continue chilling as hard as you can just to make sure you stop that heat transfer up that shaft and damaging that, uh, that seal lip. So um, sometimes they did get damaged and uh, the easiest way to get that done was an engineered um, um, split seal to put them in. Uh, weren't always successful, you always tended to get little weeps out, but um, nine times out of ten they, they, they did work if you, uh, if you did damage that, that, that lip for whatever reason, um, whether it was uh, due to heat or whether it was due to, uh, to wear and tear. Um, as I said, it was an easy solution to get a, a half seal up there. You couldn't obviously get a seal over a coupling that was in place, so half seals, engineered half seals were the, uh, were the only other alternative you had. All right, I'll let that cool off. Um, We'll, we'll bore that out and we'll part it off and then machine it off to the set length so that'll become our dummy so we don't have to continually keep um, punching that, uh, that cup in and out. Um, we'll also machine up the, um, the the punch out wash that's going to go on that shaft and we'll machine up the little spacer wash that's going to go on with this as well so we'll keep moving on we'll come back uh, as I said I'll, I'll come back when we've got this uh, this board out it's a little bit long it's going to take a couple of minutes Right, so we've got everything off to size. I've sort of mimicked what the end of the, uh, the bearing is between the cup and the, and the cone. So we'll just uh, part this off, leave ourselves a little bit to, uh, to face off at the end. Hmm, well, that's not good. It's just touching. Pretty horrible steel, this stuff. Yucky steel. Uh. I just finished it off with a hacksaw. I do need to change that tip over. That's, <laughs> that doesn't look too good either. All right, we'll just, uh, yeah, there's only a couple of more on that. Hacksaw that out before we do any damage and uh, turn that around, face it off and uh, we'll assemble things up. Oh no, so that should be back to 15 millimeters. There we go. So that's all our envelopes done for that dummy bush. So um, We'll make up our, our spacer washers and we'll make up our flinger ring or our thrust washer that's got to go on our uh, worm shaft. So we'll get that made up next, then we can start assembling that uh, transmission gear into place and just see how everything's uh, how everything's marrying up. So we'll get set up for that now. Right, now I've just put our worm shaft in here with the uh, with the bearing, so that's registering up into the cup. Doesn't matter the fact that it's slightly off center, but it is very, very tight in there. So what I've done is I've just put a bit of a permanent marker on and I'm just wiggling that 
backwards and forwards to find out where our high spots are, where we have issues. So I've done the backwards and forwards, so I'll just take this out now and I'll have a look at it. Let's have a look. I don't know if you can see there, but yeah, on the flanks there, we've got. It's not too even either. It's uh, the top of the flank up here, down the root of the flank, and there is where we've got some rubbing. So what I'm going to do is um, set up my lathe for a module cut. I've got a tool there already that I've done some worms with in the past and we're just going to give that flank just a slightest little kiss just to remove the slightest amount of material give us a little bit more clearance it's not rubbing on the top or the bottom in any way but it's just on that on that flank so we're going to set that up now give that a little lick we'll get that right and then we'll move on with the next operations. Bit of a pain, I guess, when you're buying this sort of gear off eBay, cheap and nasty, the numbers may not quite be quite be right. And uh, you know, I reckon if I had to drop the center down, maybe a couple of thou, we would have been right. But yeah, anyway, can only go with uh, with what we calc up. So uh, anyway, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll get that set up. We'll see how we go showing this, but. This worm wheel, you can just see where the, where the witness is just there where it's been rubbing. And that surface there is absolutely atrocious. So I'm just going to get in there with my little Dremel. And I've just ground up a... Uh, uh, a small stone that I'm going to fit up inside there and I'm just going to clean those those faces up because they are just so ragged and rough. And I think the reason why it's uh, high on one side, low on the other, is that it's it's just catching on. There's a big burr on this edge here as it comes up out of the worm. It's just catching on it. So what I'll do first of all, before I do any work cutting the flanks on that, I'm just going to get in there and just clean up inside to remove all those machine burrs that are that are on that face it's really badly galled from from the machine that was done on it so i'm going to spend some time out in the sun with my dremel and uh i'll just very very gently just go away and just clean that surface up and then we'll come back and try it again and uh, if we're still having issues then we'll uh, set the, the lathe up for that 2.5 module cut and just lick those flanks on one side all right well Right, well I've cleaned up the, um, the surface finish in there and look, it's 100% better. You can actually get a rotation out, but come about halfway and it gets tight. You can see it there, just a bit tight. Here it's beautiful. It's, uh, it runs lovely, but you get about half of it and it starts getting tight and it comes good again. So I think we might just take a very, very light whisker off one of those flanks. And we're only talking 0 0.1, 0 0.1 of a mil. Very, very little indeed that needs to come off that. So you know, it's just a slightest little bit of backlash in that. But it just gets a little bit tight just here. But uh, yeah, taking that, uh, cleaning that surface finish up. I hardly took anything off it, it's just a buffet, it was absolutely atrocious. <laughs> like a dog it had a 
had a go at it and mauled up. So, um, all right, well, we'll set up and just have a look at what we can do further to get that the same all the way around. But there's nowhere like that before. Right, so I've got this set up now. I couldn't find my little um, tool that I use for cutting worms. I've, I've done quite a few worms. That was one of the trials I did for a job I was doing. So I had to knock out a few of those. But um, I've got a tool here that we can match the flank angle to, which is what I've done. We're only going to take it off on one flank just to give us the clearance that we want. Uh, I've set it up for a 2.5 module cut. So I'll just crank that into zero. I'm just going to go very, very, very gently with this. So I'm going to keep this engaged all the time. So as you saw, that took a minuscule amount off. So we're certainly not going to overcook this. We're going to take it very, very, very slowly. So what I'm doing is I'm bringing it into zero each time. Advance the top slide, and I'll come at it again. So I'm only getting a feel for it at the moment. Now I've used a diamond lap on this tool, so it's razor sharp at the moment. So we've got little spots where it's cutting. thing is when you're doing this sort of thing is not to get too impatient just take your time it's so easy to make a mistake I'm going to try and get this right first time so I don't have to set it up again. Well, if we get another one like that, I reckon that'll do us. All 
Alright. Just take it over and we will try it. Alright, so I've got that in now after we've done that little machine and that's rolling beautifully and just there there is the smallest little high spot just there so what I will do is I'll set it back up in the lathe again which I didn't want to and uh, just take another minute little lick off that to get that clean so I won't show that on camera I'll, uh, I'll just go and spend some time and just take that little tiniest lick off that but uh, we'll do that and and then we're home. Yeah, just a tiny little high spot. So we'll play it safe and we'll get that fixed up. Right, uh, we've taken that little whisker off and I've also taken a whisker off the other flank because um, yeah, it wasn't real flash and it was fairly uneven when I was cutting through. So now, uh, just here, tiny bit of backlash there. There, 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 there. So that's it fitted up and uh, nicely done. Yeah, I've got those flanks there, an absolute mirror finish off that tool that I uh, that I diamond lapped. So yeah, very happy with that. That's. Uh, that's a good result. Very good result. Just the smallest amount of backlash in there. So, all right. Um, as I said, we'll go ahead and make up the spacer washers next, and uh, this little unit we're going to use for punching out the uh, this little um, thrust washer for punching out the uh, the cup if we ever need to remove this. So I'll get that fitted on as well. So, all right. Happy. Very, very happy with that result. And uh, I'm glad I've also cleaned up the faces of um, that worm wheel as well. It, uh, it was just really galled with that machining. It was, uh, wasn't in a happy place, but no, good result in the end. All right, guys. All right, guys, just very quickly, I forgot to show you what I'm doing about dressing up the teeth on this little worm wheel. So all I've got is I've got my, well, it's a rock, but it's actually... A Dremel clone and I've just got the extension flexible ex extension shaft on it just with a small stone and I'll show you how we just very quickly dress these up and as I said I'm only just taking off the the raggedy machining marks that are in here so it's very simple it just lightly cleans it up is all we're doing so I'll just give a little bit of a demo on how we're doing that So that's uh, very, very lightweight. I've already gone through and done these, but I'm um, just giving you a little bit of a demo on, on how we clean those up. And that leaves a pretty reasonable finish behind there compared to what was there when I actually got these. So I've actually just shaped this uh, this little grinding stone just a little bit on my on my bench grinder, just to put in a bit of a point so I can get down to the root of the tooth there quite comfortably. Very, very light. We're not taking anything off so to speak we're only just cleaning that surface up and giving that a nice smooth surface for that uh, for that worm shaft to rub into so fairly simple just to clean it up all right guys